What's up YouTube? Have you wondered how to cut and trim clips in DaVinci Resolve on the iPad? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back. My name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator. And today we're talking about how you can cut and trim clips in DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. Now, last week I talked about how impressed I was with the cut page in DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. So this is following along with that, showing you how to actually cut and trim. Now, this video comes from my full course, Intro to DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, editing your first video, which is available on Skillshare and on Gumroad. You can check out the links for that in the description below. Be sure to stay tuned till the end of the video for a special offer. Now let's go ahead, jump in, and learn how we can cut and trim in DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. All right, now that we know how this is set up a little bit, we're going to be able to actually start making our video, which involves a lot of cutting and trimming of different clips. Now remember, for your project, you need to have at least three clips, and they need to add up to be around 60 seconds long. So let's just take a look here at this. When we come in here, we can see on our timeline that we have these two clips stacked on top of each other. Now one of the first things that we want to know how to do is move a clip around, and that's just by clicking and dragging. You can do this with your finger, or you can do it with a mouse like I am, and we're just going to drag this all the way over so that we can get to the end and drop it in next to our other clip. This can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Sometimes you have to drop it and then move it again, but eventually you'll get there. Now if you end up with a gap in here like this, where I just kind of went over, just click on that and hit delete on your keyboard or on the screen, and you'll get rid of that gap. Now we can see that we have a spot here where we transition. I'm just going to hit spacebar on my keyboard to make this play. And it jumps to the next one. Now the next thing that we want to know about is cutting and trimming. I didn't do in and out points on this clip. And so this first part, there's nothing going on. It's just the beginning. You can't see the spoon coming in. And so I wouldn't want it to start until right about here. So I want to be able to cut my clip there so they can get rid of that first part. To do that, I'm just going to click on the top of the playhead and hold down. Then I get my scissors right here at the top of it and I click that and now you can see if you look in the main timeline that I have another clip here in the middle. I'm just going to click on that clip and then go down and hit the delete key. And it automatically does not put a gap in there. It does what's called a magnetic timeline and it just pulls the rest of the video with it. So it eliminates that gap that we had and just brings the whole video. So now we go from this shot to this shot. And as I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, I would really like that to even come in later. So I could do the same thing where I just go ahead and cut it and then delete it. Or I can do what's called a trim. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to hover my mouse right by the edge here. And this is a little bit easier to do with a mouse than it is with your finger, but it works with your finger as well. You can see that it turns into this little razor blade icon. And when I click and drag, it's going to pull that clip forward. I just want to do it till I get the playhead right there. And now it's where I want, where the action is actually going to start here. Okay, that's much better. Now we know how to cut a clip and then delete a clip. And we also know how to trim from the edge. Let's go ahead and see that again. We're just going to use our top timeline to jump all the way to the end. And we're going to see where this clip ends. And really find where we want it to be right about there probably. So let's go ahead and grab the end of the clip and we'll just bring it in. So we're going to find that trim point right there. Click and drag it back. And you can see that it shows you in the viewer where you are at as you drag it. And so I want it to be right about there. Okay, now let's go ahead and bring in our next clip. So we can do this by clicking here. And then of course, I'm going to try and find the right in and out points here. So I think I want it just as the spoon is entering. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Click and drag my start point over. And then see it's being stirred. And I want that drop to happen right there. Be the last thing that we see. So we're going to go ahead and drag that back. So now we have our in and out point set. Let's just drag this onto the timeline. One thing to note when you're on the timeline is if you grab right in between the clips, you can see this double headed arrow appears when you're using a mouse and that's going to actually do a slip. So it's just going to slip the cut from one side to the other. And you can see this if you look up in the viewer at the top, 
that we're actually changing where one clip starts and the other clip ends, but we aren't changing the overall duration. So that's different than if you get the razor blade, which will allow you to go backwards and forwards. So if I grab the razor blade, I'm actually going to get rid of some of this clip. So I'm going to pull this closer just to where the spoon almost enters the milk. Okay, now another thing that you might wanna do is get rid of the audio on your clip. I don't know if you can hear, but there's a little click that happens when that spoon goes in. And I don't really want sound here because I'm going to add music. So in order to get rid of the sound, we're just going to hold down on our clip until we get our right click menu. And then we're going to go ahead and hit mute. And you can see that a little mute symbol appears right here in the bottom left hand corner of the clip. So now we've put a couple of these different clips together and you can see that our video is going pretty long here. If you look down at the time, you can see that we are at one minute, 10 seconds. And by the end of the clip, we're at one minute, 24 seconds. And so we don't want that. So we're going to need to adjust the speed of these clips. These were shot in slow motion. So we're going to need to adjust their speed some in order to do that. In addition to adjusting the speed of a clip, there are several other things we can do to transform a clip. So we're going to talk about those in the next video. Okay, I hope you enjoyed learning more about how to use DaVinci Resolve on your iPad. I'm very, very excited to have DaVinci Resolve here on the iPad, and I'm going to be putting out more videos about this and other iPad programs as we go throughout the year. Now, don't forget that you can check out the full course, Intro to DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, editing your first video with the links in the description below. If you have a subscription to Skillshare, you can click the link for the Skillshare course. If you just wanna purchase the course as a single purchase, then you can go ahead and click on the link for Gumroad. Be sure to use the code YT15 so that you can get that course for just $15. All right, now jump in the comments and let me know what you think of DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.